Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 276 of the RRBG podcast. This episode is also brought to you by Kill Cliff. My friends over at Kill Cliff make the best energy drink you can buy in the market today. Clean energy, none of that crap that they put in Monster or any of those Red Bulls. No sugar, just clean power for all the grind you're going to have to put in today. And if you're not grinding today and you just want to relax, they also have CBD drinks to help you recover from any injuries you may have, any kind of inflammation. Maybe you went a little too hard at the gym. CBD drink will get you right back on track. Go to their website, killcliff.com. Check out all their different flavors. My personal favorite Ignite drink is the Cherry Limeade. And in the CBD category, you have to try the Joe Rogan Special. It's the Flaming Joe Pineapple with Jalapeno. It's not that spicy. You just get a little bit of a kick at the end. It's delicious. Go to killcliff.com and tell them that RRBG sent you. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends at Saints Joints. Go to saintsjoints.com to check out all the options that they have They have these amazing packages with pre-roll joints, which will have pre-rolls from either side of the strain spectrum, either Indica or Sativa, and they even have multi-strain collections. Pick up one of their amazing Book of Saints. They currently have two volumes, volume two being a special Halloween edition. It looks like the Necronomicon. It's amazing. They're currently available in Washington and Oregon and will soon be available in California. Go to saintsjoints.com and tell them that RRBG sent you. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Thunder King Coffee. Thunder King provides organic air-roasted coffee straight out of Costa Mesa, California. It's seriously some of the best coffee I've ever had. My personal favorite is the Positive Morning Attitude. I order two pounds of this almost every two weeks because I just can't get enough. But they also have bottled cold brew. They have their special California Christmas peppermint cold brew out right now. You can order it from their website. So go to thunderkingcoffee.com and check it out. Support small independent businesses, people. In this episode, I talked to Colin and Matthew of Absent in Body and Amen Ra. We talked about the new Absent in Body album, Play God, which is available on Relapse Records. We talked a little bit about the writing process behind it, how they met with Scott Kelly and Igor from Sepultura. We talked a bit about their visual aesthetics. We talked about the Church of Ra. We talked about Malachi Black's connection with them and the AEW having their music on national television. It was an interesting conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure to pick up Absent in Body's Play God out on Relapse Records. Check out Amen Ra when you get a chance. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little heart, the follow button, the bell, and check out our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG and support the podcast. Cheers. I'm gonna. Uh, so I'm Cuban, and I'm gonna make an attempt at saying your both of your last names. <laughs> okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see if I get this right. <clears throat> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the RRBG podcast. I am being joined by Mr. Colin Ikut. Is that right? Pretty much. Close. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and I'm also joined by Matthew. Van der Kerkhoff. Did I say that right? Almost, yeah. Van der Kerkhoff. Van der Kerkhoff. Okay. Yes, yes. Very good. Nice. All right. <laughs> well, I got that out of the way. We're done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm just yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you guys, you guys are here uh, representing Absent in Body today. Uh, you're also from the band Almond Ra, both of you. And yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. A pleasure. Thanks, man. Yeah. Now, you both have been doing Amen Ra for a long time. I know since like 1999. Yeah. I got to yes. see you guys, thankfully, at uh, Psycho Las Vegas a few years uh, ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic show. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this Absent in Body is really, really great. I was listening it today. Uh, I listened to the whole album today. And uh, it's very heavy, but uh, good. 
you know, it's passionate. It feels like there's so many layers of emotions in there. Like the the, the combination of Colin screaming with uh, Scott from from Neurosis is just a beautiful mix. Yeah. It's all me doing vocals, though. <laughs> it's all you vocals? All of it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then crazy. I thought it was. I thought he was doing a little background stuff because I hear multiple different like sounds coming from you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I recorded them all uh, different layers. Yeah. Very very cool. So what why, uh, what was the decision to do kind of because you know with Amon Ra it's kind of more of a consistent style. Uh, yeah. So what made you want to switch it up here? Yeah, it took me a while to figure out what which voice to use because I was I, when I was listening to the instrumentals, I always heard like a, a low pitched voice, and naturally mm. I have a high pitched voice, so I was kind of hesitating, like like if I would be the man to do the vocals. But uh, and then we started looking for that low pitched voice, and then we found it, and then we, we according to the, the the story we're telling, we're um, we adjust vocals along the way. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And now, uh, how did you guys put this together? I mean, hanging out with, with Scott Kelly and Igor from, uh, from, from, you know, the Cavalera fame. So how, how did this all come together? You guys are from different countries and everything. Yeah. Um, um, we invited uh, Scott Kelly and uh, Igor to the, uh, our friend's studio, Tim, our bass player of Amon Ra. He has a studio. Um, so uh, I made the blueprints and, um, when uh, Scott Kelly was on tour, uh, he joined us uh, in the studio, and uh, then uh, Igor, he's from London, he came with a uh, with, um, um, uh, train to Belgium, yeah. Okay. All so, right. so that's why it took a bit long to uh, record the album, because uh, they were from different countries. And, right, uh, travel logistics, especially, yeah. you know, during the pandemic, which is crazy, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, mo most of the music was... Uh, uh recorded before the pandemic it was just the the vocals oh okay yeah. okay okay in the beginning of the pandemic yeah wow that's crazy that's crazy so when it, when you were writing the the music itself the you know i, I read a little bit about the, the theme of the album being about over, over sensory you know over like too much going on with the internet and 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 society and and politics and everything so here in America, it feels almost like a bubble, right? You know, everybody thinks that this is like a, a local problem. Like, like they're, oh, it's Biden's fault or it's Trump's fault. It's like, this is a global issue. Like, you guys don't understand. So tell me how it is that that affects you guys over there in, in terms of the oversensory. Because, you know, I figured you think it's just an American kind of lifestyle thing, but it's not. It's everywhere. Yeah, well, I, I think some 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 uh, countries or cultures have it more than others, but um, it's definitely um, the the info you get right now. Like like a few decades ago, the only info info you had was the the, the things happening in your village, you know, in the mm -hmm. or in the city or just you know, and with the family and stuff. But now you really know what is happening in the world at you know every minute of the day almost, and and it's not always. Uh, it's not always, you know, good stuff that you see uh, passing by, and it's it's pretty hard to to uh, to function as like a a living organism, you know. And and you empath you empathize with things happening, but still, you can't do much about it sometimes, and mm. it's, it's it's frightening, you know. Yeah. And uh, what you see right now, like in with the Russia Ukraine stuff, the the media propaganda machine. And um, what we kind of saw in, in in your country is that the the division, it all it all depends on what news channels you're watching, what your opinion will be and stuff. And it's kind of mm -hmm. frightening how much power that has. And anyway, so all that stuff got seeped in there, you know. And the fact that the world is going to shreds, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> barely hanging on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting, man. That, you know, you see some of the things that are out there. It, it depends on how you, um, it, it's how you cultivate your feed these days. How you, how you cultivate your algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what videos are you watching? Because don't oh, don't click on that, because then it, you know it'll switch to the, the, what what recommendations are going to come in from whatever you know YouTube or Spotify or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, 
makes it hard to like uh, open up to different opinions or, or other opinions, you know, or, or mm-hmm. realize that there's something else out there sometimes, you yeah. know, it's a, uh, yeah, weird times we're living in. Uh, yeah. How do you, how do you fight that though? When you're in a band and you want to, you know, you want to get the music out to people. So eventually you have to deal with things like a Spotify or whatever, you know, and, yeah. and it's, how do you confront that issue? Because it's it's twofold you know in, internally you're you know you're kind of against of uh, against what they're doing but at the same time you need to use that tool as a yeah. as a means of access yeah yeah that's uh t- true what you're saying that's uh that's the only thing we, we can uh, say about it uh, we need it but you're also against it so uh yeah <laughs> that's that's what it is that's what that's, it is yeah. that's the state of yeah. the world right yeah. now right yeah Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how can we, how do we do, you know, cause you, you talk a lot, you have, you know, you're the founding father of the, the church of Ra, which is like a religion of sorts. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. I'm interested because I, I it, that's the only way to get people to kind of open up about different ideas. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the band start like it, it, it's something that grew out of Amen Ra. The band started in, in uh, 1999. And then after a couple of years, you know, we, we obviously we're musicians and we music is our main thing. But uh, as you know, with with the music comes the artwork, comes uh, the video clips, comes whatever you're doing, you know. So every artistic outlet that we had, we wanted to align with uh, with the music. You know, everything had to make sense and everything had to. Uh, send out the same message and uh, a lot of our friends and peers that are around us helped us with that you know we had uh, painters and graphic uh, designers video artists and and, and contemporary dancers whatever Mm -hmm. Uh, so we all were like doing the same thing with our with our individual uh, artistic medium and uh, we realized that uh, yeah, we were forming a bigger circle than the band. You know, it was, it became a, a collective of, of like-minded people. Um, so it had to get a name. So it weren't the five musicians that were credited for everything that we're doing. So uh, from from there out, uh, Church of Ra um, uh, was born. And the Church of Ra is pretty much like... Um, it's it's the church of life it's like we're trying to um to to to, to tell our stories right and 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 um it's a direct line you know and in in that sense that we are um very very personal in our things in our in our in our storytelling mm-hmm. um and we 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 address the core of of human life you know so all the the, the 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 metaphors and emotions that we are working with are pretty much recognizable by every human being uh loose of what style of music they they prefer pretty much so it's yeah it's 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 hard to explain it's a very abstract thing um but you know people have to make their own story uh, of it they have to uh, transpone the idea on themselves and 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 fill fill in the blanks as they as they feel needed you know yeah yeah i i'm always i've always been a fan of the abstract and and you know trying to push extremities of of you know sensory levels you know in terms of art or music and uh, I, I've always found it that, you know, it tends to stay to like a smaller audience because it's so niche. It's so abstract that it takes, you know, people have a hard time understanding it. And then when you try to explain it to, to people, you, you, you really don't know what words to use. You just need to show it to them. Right. Yeah. yeah and, so- uh, I, I think you guys do put on a very good presentation visually everything, the aesthetics, everything about it looks great. You know? Yeah. Something <laughs> you need to feel and you can't explain, mm-hmm. but you feel, you see it, you understand it, but you just can't put words to it. You know, it's a, it's a, a yeah, feeling of, of connection sometimes, whatever. But I feel like now, actually, you guys are getting uh, a lot more attention to what's going on. Uh, thanks to collaborating with uh, Malachi Black over at AEW, 
Now you got your music playing on national television every week. You know, right? yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, with both yeah. bands, so it's 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 uh, we're lucky there that uh, that Tom Malakai, um, yeah, found us, and he's really nice guy. So, uh, how did that happen? Did he reach out to you guys? Um, I mean, uh, he's he's friends with one of the relapse guys. Yeah. Uh, with some of the Relapse guys. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. And, and it's also uh, from Holland. Yeah. And because yeah. of uh, the last Amra record was in Dutch. So uh, for him, that was very important. So uh, that's why he used the uh, song of the last album. Nice. So, I mean, the, the country Holland, I mean, it, it has a history, but you, you think of this dark style, this like darker, more, you know, Aesthetically, to somebody who's not into this style of music, when they see it, they think uh, scary or there's like skulls and there's, you know, satanic maybe or whatever they want to call it. You know, uh, how do you explain to someone like that or to, to open up their mind to 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 potentially, you know, enjoying something like this and seeing the beauty in it instead of trying to shy away from it? Yeah, Humanity, yeah, a lot of humans will always be short, short uh, sighted. You know, they kind of, they kind of uh, trust on the cliches and the first opinions, and and sometimes I stop there. But but sometimes you need to go take a step deeper to really understand the thing and and know what it's about, and and not be be uh, uh, overwhelmed by screaming and 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 loudness. Um, so um i mean heavy music uh can 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 uh, articulate very specific emotions because of that volume because of that power it's 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 crazy so i mean it's recognizable um to a lot of people i mean and most people at some point in their life they feel like screaming or you know they they're so frustrated about any something or whatever or hurt that they, you know, um, scream it, scream it off. And, and, and sometimes that music can be a vehicle for that. And I mean, I don't know, uh, there's, you know, everyone has its tastes and its, uh, preferences, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. And you have a very unique voice too. Like your style is the second I hear it, I know it's you. And that's very difficult to do in this genre. Cause you know, that's one of the complaints that a lot of people that don't listen to the style, of, of like metal or anything like that. They say, oh, the screaming, it's always the same, you know, yeah. yours stands out. It's completely different. Yeah, it's true. It sounds, it sounds the same a lot, but you know, a scream is a scream. You cannot uh, harmonize on screen <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. or you shouldn't, you know? Yeah. So, so tell me about that, that kind of, that scream, that, that passion uh, that you're trying to express. What do you think is the, the, the driving force for you is it uh, personally on a personal level when you're creating this art is this something that's coming from uh, your childhood is this something that's more cultural in holland that i don't understand perhaps because i've been i've never been to the country um i don't think it's cultural i think it's like i i always i made a comparison to like when you when you're walking down the street and you hear um uh, you hear a, a loud scream or a heartfelt scream somebody shouts everybody stops and everybody looks where it comes from you know mm. it it draws your attention it 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 it, it you know it, it it takes you to a halt and you want to know what it is and you want to know what's happening and you want to get to the bottom of it it's really weird so that's that's the initial idea of a scream you know it should hurt it should it should it should come from as deep as possible inside you for it to be really felt you can, you can, you know, um, like fake scream in mics and stuff and it does the trick, but it's kind of, it's kind of weird. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. It, you know, it has to, it has to cost you something physically to, to do it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the okay. sound that came out of there. So that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Now has the rising, you know, popularity with your music being on television, has that changed you, you in any way? Like, are you more stressed out now because more people are hitting you up? Are you, you know, or are you welcoming it? Does this feel good? Like you're like growing and, and now you, now what's the next step for the band? 
for me personally, it's not stressing, um, but it's but uh, it's it's a good thing that uh, we get more uh, uh, audio, yeah, yeah, attention. Um, yeah, that's, uh, but it's not stressing. And for the next album, yeah, maybe um, I think uh, I will create uh, again uh, some uh, songs. But I w I'm happy. If, my state of mind is that I have the freedom to create. I don't want to uh, set me borders and uh, to create. So I think it will be, uh, um, I'm not going to be stressed. Yeah. That's good. I, I was going to say, yeah. like, you, for some <laughs> yeah. people, when they get to a certain, you know, like yeah. they get this opportunity to be on TV, it kind of affects your writing process too. Cause you're kind of like, well, okay, now we're going to make it so that more people can enjoy yeah. it and it'll change your style. Uh, and you know, um, it's good to hear that you don't want to, you, you're not, you're just going to be free of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's good. Mm. So where, where, where do you think? So since you said this music was kind of written before the pandemic, now I'm assuming that the new stuff is going to be a little more intense because we've gone mm. through some shit since the last time. That's, was... that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. A little more powerful. I would assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Yeah. I hope, uh, I hope the pandemic is going to stop soon, but uh, we will see. Um, because uh, a lot of the music I made uh, when I was on tour with Amon Ra, I spent a lot of time uh, in the bus. Yeah. So uh, I have to get back on the road again to create uh, new music. So you feel more comfortable writing while you're on the road as opposed to like going on the road and then getting home and writing? Um, yeah, I th I think uh, because at home I have uh, I take care of uh, take care of my family, uh, the kids, stuff like that, mm. do shopping, uh, and when I'm on tour, I have like nothing around me, you know. Mm -hmm. I can just focus on the music uh, whenever I want to, to create. Uh, um, yeah. And you're just using, are you just writing with a guitar? Or are you writing on the computer? Like on uh, a it's program? Just, uh, just a computer, a drum computer, uh, and synths, all okay. with MIDI, MIDI stuff, yeah. MIDI stuff, that's cool. It's very, uh, very easy, um, um, yeah. And that's why uh, we, we uh, on the records, we blend um, digital drums with uh, Igor's drums and his, uh, normal uh, analog drums, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah it's very industrial <laughs> style. Um, you know, I, I love the mix of, of bringing in some more industrial elements to the music too, you know? Um, so are you, have you started writing at all? Or are, you, are you planning on hitting the road soon? Um, we're going on tour with Amra, I think uh, 1st April. So that's in about two weeks uh, in Europe for 30 days. So uh, I hope uh, I will make some uh, new, new songs, yeah. <laughs> nice. We will see. I don't want to put myself some uh, pressure on it. I, uh, I'm more the guy who let it flow and uh, yeah. not think too much about it. And but we will see. That's good. That's great. Uh, so in terms of visuals too for for the new tour, are you guys? Do you guys change it up? Because I mean, it felt to me what I saw at Psycho. It felt like a whole presentation. You know, like a like like a story that went through and visually all the lighting and, and everything that went that went into it. Uh, is that something that you're planning on growing, you know, bring, bringing in more elements? Do you experiment with lighting and anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. We we're not, we're not there yet. You know, we, we've, we've been working with visuals for, for, for a couple of years now, for years now, but, um, that's, I think, in my opinion, that's the only thing that we weren't able to like, really refine yet you know like because uh, mm. we're always busy with the music and then and when that's done you know then we start with the visuals and then most of the time there's a little lack of time to really do it uh, as we would want to do it but uh, but it gets adjusted all the all the time and and like now with the new songs and the new albums we have uh, we have other um, other visuals obviously yeah it changes yeah, I think that that's that's one of the most appealing things that that's what's going to really grab the the bigger audiences that are, you know, watching AEW is also the visuals that are going on with um, Malachi and his people because, mm -hmm. you know, very dark. They have the, the similar, you know, the, the skulls like the artwork. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's all tied together, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's important. I mean, I mean, yeah, people, people, people hear, people see, you have to try to nail everything, you know, and the more you can nail the, the, the more you have them in your grasp or you have their attention, you know, you have to try by all means necessary, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Uh, and this is, um, you know, you're on relapse records. I mean, they're, they've been doing a good job of trying to get vinyl out, but it's been such a nightmare with, uh, some of the plants out here trying to get the vinyl for people, huh? Yeah. Same yeah. here. Same here. It's, it's everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think six or six to nine months uh, delay or something. I think so down here. Yeah. 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 But what is, is it what we're just out of wax? Like what's going on? <laughs> Man. Yeah, everybody's yeah. been writing albums. They're, everybody yeah. wrote too much albums at the same time, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a big. That yeah. you know, last last year was a very good year, and and this year is probably going to get more music by the end of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but that's great. That's a good problem to have. I think it's better mm-hmm. to have more good music that mm-hmm. we all enjoy uh, than yeah. you know. There was a time where you know heavier music kind of went away for a little bit and now now it's starting to be popular again so that's good yeah yeah um so okay so in terms of touring here in the states is there any plans uh, and if they are like is there any bands that you would really want to work with like who would you want to be on tour with um we we just uh, yesterday or was it today uh that we announced that we're playing on uh, uh psycho las vegas Oh, the new Psycho, yes. They announced yeah. that yesterday or today? Yeah. Today, today. Today. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And the yeah. Psycho we'll lineup. Pro- yeah, we'll probably um, glue some other, some, some shows uh, onto that, after that uh, Psycho sh- uh, show. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know, bands. We've been lucky to 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 have to have toured with with a lot of bands that we love, you know, like uh, Neurosis and Converge and and Yob and 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 who else? I mean, so so it's really cool. Um, and I always love to like tour with the same people because you know them so well. You know, you're just a bunch yeah. of friends um, doing your thing. You know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking what, what other bands. Uh, like for really... me, off the top of my head, I would think like a behemoth because it's they also very visual and heavy music as well. So I feel like their crowd would appreciate what you guys are doing as well. You know, could we? We're a bit we're slower. Eh? I don't know if they yeah. would appreciate it. I, I'd yeah. hope so, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you're I'll... slower, but it's still you know visually it's and it's on the same level and <clears throat> you know uh, loudness and and passion and everything. You know, yeah, it could be yeah. Uh... Yeah, I think everybody's so. welcome. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there any any uh, anything that you listen to that people would be surprised that you listen to, All considering the type of music you make? Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> does it, I think everyone uh, listen to music that people doesn't want to know what music you are listening to. So <laughs> no, no, but I listen uh, um, to like Flemish songs okay. uh, a lot, like, uh, but also like new wave I'm listening to uh, okay. because, yeah, because I feel like the sadness in the music as well. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. St- stuff like that. Yeah. How about you, Colin? I listen. I listened to a lot of hip hop last uh, last times. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm interested. Like, and in, I'm really stoked about how they use language and how much they write. I I couldn't, you know, understand how how much pages and lyrics you can know by heart on a show. Mm. It's crazy. Like when I write, you know, you got, I have one page. They have like fucking fifteen pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they have an interesting way of, 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 of working with language and rhymes and, 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 and how they, they so and, and the timing of the, their words and stuff. So, yeah, I'm intrigued. Have you ever tried it? Not really. <laughs> no. You should try to freestyle, freestyle one time. Let's see what happens. <laughs> My friends, I think. You, you imagine that'll be a new side project for you. You get a rap album out. Yeah, yeah. too much for that now. <laughs> No, have you seen? There's a rap uh, duo from I think like England or Ireland somewhere I, that that are uh, older gentlemen. They're all gray. Yeah. <laughs> They're really good. I mean, 
I like that. You know, <laughs> old geezers. Is that something out there? I think something like that. The old geezers. I, I, I don't know. I forget what they're called, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Good, yeah. I mean, you should, I, I've always found that fascinating. I've seen some people at parties, you know, I'll go to a party, you know, for a band after show or something. And there was, a, I stayed till like three in the morning and there was a, a girl there and she started rapping out of nowhere. And it wasn't a song, like she wasn't singing somebody's song. She was just <clears throat> freestyling and it looked, she looked possessed. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I, she looked like something hit her and she was just, yeah. -da 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 -da. I'm like, Whoa, what just happened? And it felt like a, like an intrusion from like an outside <laughs> energy or something. It was just so weird. Yeah. It, it has to be, it seems to be so <laughs> hard. It's crazy. You know? Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I've tried. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, do you guys have any other hobbies outside of music? Do you guys play video games? Do you guys you, do you watch wrestling? Do you watch AEW's? You know, like Malachi and work and everything. Uh, they don't really show it. Here. I, they don't no. show it, dude. No. no. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> they don't have yeah, yeah. any kind of broadcast. They, I mean, yeah. like maybe online or something. The only yeah. uh, the only one I, that I know was the Hulk. Oh. Yeah. So, wow. Uh, in that time, the, like when it, when it still was WWF, like yeah, uh, yeah. ages ago, then they they showed it on TV here. Yeah. But since then, there was nothing. Wow, yeah. that's a that's a fail yeah. on their part, you know, so, the whole market I, right there, no money. I, I wish I can I can, can see live uh, once. You should, so, man. you yeah. should try and plan it with uh, talk to talk to Tommy and see what yeah, you guys yeah, can because yeah. that it's uh, that's really what it is. It's watching it live because you know yeah. TV TV's you know it's TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're there, you feel the energy of what's going. Oh, the on. people in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good. Well, that's cool. So do you? I so can you imagine. Know, so any hobbies at all, Colin? Like you, you know, do you read? Do you? No, word, I, word working. I, don't do, I don't do much really. I, I'm, I'm always busy with the, with, with, the, with the bands and, and things around that. And okay. then trying to raise my kids, uh, not too badly. And that pretty much makes all my time. Yeah. Some skateboarding oh. occasionally. Yeah. Uh, that's oh, okay. It. Skateboarding school. How about you, Matthew? I used to skate a lot, uh, but now, uh, I bought my, uh, me a camera and, uh, I like to take some photographs. Ah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And because of uh, in the pandemic, uh, I, I took before the pandemic as well, but now uh, with the pandemic, I bought me, yeah, it get me more into photography. So um, I like it. I see them on your website, uh, on your Instagram. Uh, if you guys yeah. go to, uh, it's uh, his name at Matthew. Oh my God. Let me do it again. <laughs> Van der Kerk. Van der Kerk Van der Kerkhove. Kerkhove. There yeah. we go. You know means, what that means? Me, uh, yeah, I, I would tell. It means yeah. uh, from the graveyard. From the graveyard. Yeah. Wow, I like it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're we're gonna do we're gonna run out of time here shortly. Okay. We have nine minutes uh, left. But uh, um so if you guys were to uh come here to the States to do a few shows uh august i believe that's when psycho is yeah. happening yeah so that's when we should expect some other shows i would love for you guys to come to the west coast to california that way we can we can see you out here but yeah. we'll have a coffee then yeah oh yes 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 we can have coffee out here <laughs> <laughs> um do you, we can make you a coffee if you guys want to yeah, just... draw a coffee you let's can do make it. coffee uh, out yeah. what about beer do you guys drink Yes. Yeah, I drink. Yeah, Matthew, you drink. I, uh, oh. And um, yes, and you probably know uh, Belgium uh, is the country with uh, the most beer. So uh, yeah, I feel lucky. Yeah, <laughs> you're at the source. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a brewery out there called Cantillon. That's my favorite. They make sour beers. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, they're like almost every village has his uh, his own beer. Uh, yeah, it's very popular in Belgium. That's awesome. All, ki all kind of beers. Yeah. Well, you guys should get your own beer. We can make that happen yeah. too. You know, <laughs> if you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was. I will send you one then. Oh yes, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Uh, Absent in body comes out. When is it? March twenty fifth. Five. Yeah. 
March 25th on uh, Relapse. I heard the whole thing, and it's powerful, man. Very, very powerful. I love it. And, Thank you very uh, much. I'm hoping to hear more. You know, I, I like Amon Ra, too, so I want to hear more of that, too. I know that's asking too much. That's a lot of work for both of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. but, yeah, I love what you're doing. I, I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, any Anybody wants to follow you guys? The Instagrams, those are the best places? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Instagram, yeah. I mean, I, I don't like Twitter. We don't really use that a lot out here. Uh, more for you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like it either. It's, uh, not, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, again, thank you for being on, Colin, Matthew. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Take care. Yeah, yeah. bye. Thanks, Charlie.